Hello everyone, welcome to the channel here at Medium Arc Weather. It's great to have you here on the channel. As usual, we're going to start off with our major hurricane coverage here, Hurricane Milton, a Category 5, a monster of a hurricane brushing the northern Yucatan Peninsula here. That is on its way towards Florida come Wednesday, where it will make landfall as a major hurricane. Let's get into it. Before the sun goes down here, I wanted to show you those loop just before the sun sets. Look at this storm on the visible satellite picture. That is quite interesting. And here we go, taking a look at the infrared satellite picture. This thing is a monster 180 plus miles an hour. It will probably continue to go up to 185, maybe 190. Look at this three dimensional satellite view. We can really get a good idea of the symmetry of this system, that classic donut shaped. Look at these higher cloud tops. Unfortunately, look at the northern coast of the Yucatan Peninsula here. You are being impacted here. And unfortunately, this storm is on its way to Florida. And just take a look at that tightly wound eye. This thing is one of those really pinhole type eyes. It is just so wound up. And it just continues to strengthen. Look at those cloud tops. Here's our simulated satellite uh, with our HWRF model. Always a great thing to look at. Really does a good job. Wow, look at that. This is going to go through an eyewall replacement cycle on Tuesday. So it's likely going to increase the size of this storm. But look at this. This is what this storm's going to look like, you know, in about 24, 36 hours. And it still maintains that donut shaped. And look at it, it's growing in size here with respect to Florida. That eye gets a lot bigger. Yes, it does start to look a little more ragged as, you know, we start to get some of that dry air and training on the southwest side here. But look at that. The core is still intact here as we get into, you know, Wednesday here. And there it is pulling up to the north. Obviously, this model is taking it too far to the north, but you get the idea. The core is going to be pushing right into Tampa Bay area and just southward here. All right, so we're starting off with the European model here. Just want to make note, this is Hurricane Milton coverage, so we are not going to really cover much of anything else today, considering this is a major, extreme Category 5 hurricane. So as we continue in time, we're using the Euro here as our base point because obviously you can see these models are not keeping up with the intensity of the storm. It's just overshot every model. But here it is, brushing the northern Yucatan coast as we continue into Tuesday morning uh, from Progresso over to Cancun, Merida inland here. This is going to continue the spiraling bands. The core may brush the northern coastline here. And then you're going to start to see... We have another system over here that may try to develop, but we got this trough that's going to be lifting out of the northeast Gulf of Mexico. That's going to help steer Milton up to the northeast here. So as we go out here through, here it is, Wednesday morning at 8 a.m. You can see it's right in line here with Naples. This is where the eye wall is going to be huge. I think the eye wall is going to encompass, let's just zoom in here a little bit more. Cape Coral, Northport, all the way up to Tampa, Clearwater area, and just south of Spring Hill here. This area, especially Tampa Bay, very concerned about all the way down to Northport here, Cape Coral, Naples. You might actually have surge all the way down here uh, into south, the west coast of South Florida. So I just want to make note of that. There's going to be a massive surge on the south and east side of this system, of course, the winds here to the north pulling water away from shore, but you're still going to have tremendous wind and rain on the north side of this as well. But this is a bad scenario for Tampa, St. Petersburg area, Tampa Bay, and there it is. So if we look, landfall is right around Wednesday evening here, give or take a little bit, 8 to 11 p.m. here. The eye wall is going to be huge, so the eye wall will probably start to come on shore around 7 or 8 p.m. As this thing barrels to the northeast, it crosses over, and it starts to move more easterly. You can see it's being pulled by this trough over here to the east, and then we got high pressure building into the north, so that actually pushes it more to the southeast here. So this should make a clean exit here. Once it gets on the other side of Florida and it will become more extra tropical in nature here as this high pressure system builds in. And if we take a look at our GFS model here, it has a very similar track. Let's just put this into motion a little bit. 
and we can get a good sense of what's going to be happening with this storm. So here it is moving away from the Yucatan Peninsula as we head later on Tuesday into Wednesday. It does start to pick up that forward speed, and here it is on the GFS really showing up very well, of course. These models still are not keeping up with the intensity of this storm, and I'll show you the intensity scale here momentarily of what we expect this storm to be, but the GFS has been very consistent with bringing this into Tampa Bay. This is 2 a.m. on Thursday morning, so the GFS unfortunately is not as fast here as the European model has been. I'm kind of with the European here on timing and less more with the, you know, the track and intensity here with the GFS and the hurricane model, which I'll show you the HWRF hurricane model momentarily. But here it is on the GFS. You can see the eastern eye wall coming ashore. Technically, this is still Wednesday evening at 11 p.m. So the GFS has increased its speed speed a bit to catch up with the European model. And that's why I'm using the European model here as some guidance uh, for time frame here. But there it is moving on short. And it's just going to be an awful night Wednesday night. And then look at that Thursday morning into the afternoon. It crosses over. So there's going to be major impacts. You're going to feel this all the way from the panhandle, those northern uh, bands of rain and gusty winds all the way down to Miami. I think we're going to have a very large area of potential hurricane gusts and hurricane force winds, tropical storm force winds. There's going to be a lot of counties here under hurricane warnings and tropical storm warnings. So heed those local statements as well by your local officials. But there it is. Does the GFS do a clean exit? It it does. And that that is some good news as you know high pressure builds into the north. That trough kind of leading it out here due east. And before we continue with more hurricane coverage here on Hurricane Milton, don't forget if you made it this far in the video and you like it, smash that like button, everyone. It really does help. Question or comment down below. I love to read your questions or comments. And don't forget, if you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe bell notification button so you're alerted with all my future weather updates. Let's continue. All right, so getting into our hurricane model here, this model's been most consistent with the intensity, although it hasn't caught up either, you know, 920 millibars here as we get into Tuesday morning. But look at the feeder bands really hitting the North Shore of the Yucatan Peninsula. Cancun's over here. Uh, Merida is over here. Progresso is over here. So yeah, this is going to be a monster storm. It's probably going to go through an eye wall replacement cycle here on Tuesday. And then as we head into Wednesday here, there it is. The size of it is growing. Look at this. And we still have a 938 millibar low here. So yeah, it does lose some intensity. But here it is, Wednesday evening. This model's been slower than the rest of them as well. So that's another reason. I'm not using it for time frame. I'm using it more for in intensity. And it has been further north than the other models too. This one's still consistently taking it north of Tampa Bay. Not really in agreement with this, but this just shows... What we could be looking at here, these these feeder bands on the east side are really going to dig real far south here into South Florida with tremendous, uh, you know, wind damage, tornado threat. And this surge could also propagate all the way down the coastline here from Tampa Bay southward. So if you're in those surge zones where you can really pile up those waters you might want to evacuate here. And then look at that. It just barrels inland here. It's just a little bit too no far north here. That's why we're using the European model and the GFS here as our base. So let's look at the HMON model. I don't usually look at this model. It's, it's a little bit more lower resolution, but that's okay. It's had a pretty good handle on this storm. As, look at this. As we get into Tuesday here into Wednesday, here it is approaching the coastline. Here it is 11 a.m. on Wednesday. And... This one, this hurricane model is actually pretty consistent here with bringing in a Tampa Bay. It is a bit slow too. Here it is 11 p.m. and it still hasn't made landfall. But keep in mind, this eye wall will be pretty big. Um, and there it is, Tampa Bay. This is 954 millibars. This is still a major hurricane and it's going to have the surge. Even if this comes into a three or a low end four, likely a higher end three, it's still going to have the surge of a higher end four or five, given that it's had so much time across the Gulf of Mexico to come in with this kind of water uh, along the west coast of Florida. And the fact that it'll pick, be picking up forward speed is also troublesome. And let me show you this here on one of our mesoscale models, our NAM three kilometer. Look at this. 
yeah, this is our future radar, and this is what we could be dealing with here as we head on into Wednesday evening and Wednesday night. Here it is just off the coast of Tampa Bay, Sarasota area, Clearwater, St. Petersburg. All right, you want to see our future radar of this entire storm here? Look at South Florida as we head into Tuesday into Wednesday. Yeah, this propagates towards the north, so this is just Tuesday through 4 p.m., you're going to be dealing with saturated soil here, and that's going to slowly propagate its way north towards central Florida as we get into early Wednesday morning. And then Wednesday is the big day. Yeah, you know you're going to be getting some serious tornadic threat here, especially on the east side, these easterly feeder bands here. So here's some wind gust analysis here on our GFS. Look at that. There it is, 2 p.m. on Wednesday. Here it is, barreling right up through Sarasota, Tampa. Those, see those wind gusts? Wow, 102 miles an hour just east of the eye wall here as we get into Wednesday evening. And then it starts to slow down as it starts to make the curve. But look at that. You could be seeing hurricane force winds all the way inland towards Orlando. Obviously, these aren't the best depiction, but this is, you know, the best we've got in terms of, you know, analyzing what we could be looking at widespread with wind gusts. Obviously, more localized near that eye. It's going to be more closer to 130, 140, 150 mile per hour gusts in some of those areas. So here's the intensity scale. This thing has been running up to cat five here for a while. Look at this. Yeah, there's a lot of models. No, I'm not sure what's going on up here with some of these models, but eventually, you know, we're going to see steady weakening as we head towards the Florida coastline, most likely to a higher end three or a low end four. I'm thinking more like a higher end three here, 125, close to 130 mile an hour winds here at landfall with, you know, higher gusts. Uh, but there it is. This is going to be a category five for quite some time as we go through Tuesday into early Wednesday. So National Hurricane Center, always great with putting out these peak surge forecasts. I want to make note from Anclot to River, probably pronouncing that incorrectly, down to Englewood here. This includes the whole entire area of Tampa Bay through Sarasota. I think it's as far, maybe as far south as Northport, Northport or just shy of Northport. I'm not certain on that, but it's going to be close. Even Northport, you know, you're southward there, 6 to 10 feet, 10 to 15 feet here. Tampa Bay. And southward to Sarasota, these areas, 10 to 15 feet. This is just tremendous surge and you know it's going to be a little bit higher where that water is able to funnel you know perfectly as that as this comes into the coastline at that perfect intersection angle here so for our structure of the hurricane it doesn't have any dry air here at mid layers to deal with until here's the gfs model even up to landfall the gfs is not really spiraling much dry air on the south side it does cut off some of those feeder bands. It's not until it makes landfall that dry air starts to entrain, and that's when the conversion to extra tropical will happen. Let's see the euro. So looking at the European model here, the euro has been showing more dry air. You can see it wrapping around here into South Florida uh, by Wednesday evening, just prior to landfall here. And there it is wrapping around into South Florida. So the European is more optimistic with weakening the storm quicker. This would be a better solution, but it would still be terrible because look at that. It does start to slow it down slightly over Florida until it starts to accelerate again uh, once it makes the turn more easterly here. But there it is, extra tropical by October 11th. And if you take a look at upper level wind shear here, yeah, it doesn't encounter much wind shear until you get to the eastern gulf. It will actually encounter some upper level wind shear here just prior to landfall so that could weaken it to a three still a three a very dangerous large circulation this is nothing to mess around with there and there it is conversion to extra tropical by october 11th here so rainfall amounts for florida here on the gfs actually let's get actually into those um if we go here we go total qpf there is wow yeah so some areas it depends on where you are, but some areas could actually get up to 10 to 12 inches of rain locally higher, even beyond that. The GFS has been a little more optimistic with, you know, pushing some dry air on the south side of the system. But there it is on the northwest side. That's typically where you get the heaviest rain anyways. As we get into our European run here. Yeah, there's actually more showing up here on the European run. Um, 
still Miami, you're under three inches, which is kind of puzzling. You think you'll be a little more closer to three or over three. And most areas getting four to as much as seven inches here with locally higher to 10 inches possible, especially just on the northwest side of this eye wall and circulation. And as I showed you before, here is their rainfall, you know, amount. Yeah, it's widespread six to eight inches in, in many of these areas. Flash flooding threat is running extremely high as well, especially into these red zones where you have moderate, at least 40% chance of some flash flooding. If we take a look at the National Hurricane Center here, putting out the hurricane warning for the west coast of Florida here in the red. Look, at we actually have a hurricane watch here on the east coast of Florida. So the west coast hurricane warning, east coast uh, hurricane watch. And look at that. We even have tropical storm watches and warnings here for South Florida all the way up the coastline here to the Panhandle as well. And there it is on the northern coast to the Yucatan here. Hurricane warning in effect. And before we continue with more weather, check out these awesome, amazing maps that you won't find anywhere else. I am proud to announce that I am now an affiliate with Trilogy Maps. TrilogyMaps.com bringing you the most digital, customizable maps found nowhere else on the internet. These maps are simply stunning. It's an advanced layering system that makes these maps great for making forecast maps with ease or any other maps that you would like to display important information on. The resolution on these maps is simply amazing. From the detail of everything here in the States, and you can also create stunning, digital, professional layered maps from also across the entire world. And don't forget in checkout, the discount code option, use my code, MediaMark, hit apply, and you will get 20% off your order. So if you want the most professional, customizable, and affordable weather maps found nowhere else on the internet, Look no further than TrilogyMaps.com. Link in the description down below along with your discount code. Thanks everyone for watching here at MediaMark Weather. Don't forget, we are here for you. Keeping you ahead of this hurricane situation in Florida. We're going to get you through this. This is a very life-threatening situation. And don't forget, I will keep the updates coming out as long as this storm is cranking. So don't forget, you can find me on Facebook also at MediaMark, also Weather Northeastern, also Hurricane Northeastern, also Twitter at Weather Eastern, MediaMark.com, and also, don't forget, right here at YouTube. Hit that subscribe bell notification button, like, and share the video with all your friends and family. Thanks, everyone.